film archives, together with our professional gauges, we also have a lot of amateur material. Most collections do have amateur, and I think it is an important part of film history. And certainly from the very early days of cinema, there was the desire by the amateur to actually make films themselves, rather than just passively go and watch them. They wanted to take films of their friends and their family. They even wanted to construct small story films themselves. So um, that was too expensive. Certainly there are examples of amateur home movies on 35mm, but 35mm as a gauge was too expensive for most people to use. 16mm certainly helped, but it was still expensive. So hence the birth of the 8mm. So I thought we'd look today at the difference between the two types of 8mm film you've probably heard of, Standard 8 and Super 8. Now the first one that came in was this one, this is Standard 8. And if you're actually used to looking at 60mm, you will notice that it is literally half of 16mm. Have a look at this piece here that I have in my hand. It's actually unsplit Standard 8 you can see that the film has been put through the camera twice and then in processing it's actually slit down the middle. So when you're looking at standard 8 and trying to identify it as such, it's the size of the perfs. They're quite big, they take up quite a lot of space in the actual picture area. Um, whereas if you look at Super 8, much smaller perfs. So the first one that came in in the early 30s was standard 8. And it really wasn't until the late, mid, late 60s that Super 8 became the norm. So this opened out the types of filmmaking that was available to people, because it really was just a rich person's um, hobby up until that point, that Standard and Super 8 revolutionised that.